Hey guys, if you're anything like me, you have become fully submerged in the trial that is taking place in the low country of South Carolina. I've been deep diving it all week since the trial started, but I didn't see anything out there that was just the facts, just the timeline with the information of what happened, no bias. So that's what I'm gonna give you here. You truly could deep dive into several different rabbit holes in this timeline, but I'm trying to stick to just the facts as they happened. So let's get into it. Let's clear this up from the beginning. I'm going to be saying Murdoch because that is just how I originally heard it through the media and what it sounded like he was saying to me in his 911 call, but I have heard Alec himself say his last name three different ways now, so feel free to use whatever way you want. My favorite is Murdick, which he said in the body cam footage the other day in the trial. But anyway, I'm gonna say Murdoch. For three generations, members of the Murdoch family have served as South Carolina's 14th Circuit Solicitor, which is like a district attorney in other states. They represented five counties. I've heard it Beaufort or Beaufort, either way. Jasper, Hampton, Allendale, and Colton. A Murdoch ran for office unopposed in all but a handful of elections for 85 years. This tenure is considered the longest of its kind in the history of the United States. In 1993, Richard Alexander Murdoch and Margaret Kennedy Branstetter, otherwise known as Maggie, were married. In 1996, they gave birth to their oldest son, Richard Alexander Murdoch Jr. He goes by the nickname Buster, which was also his great grandpa's nickname. Three years later, they gave birth to their second son, Paul Terry Murdoch. He is named Terry after Maggie's father. Now we're gonna go back a little bit in the timeline. I just wanted to keep the family stuff together. In 1995, Alex starts his career at the law firm founded by his great grandfather, PMPED, or more commonly referred to as The Firm by locals. Now this is part of those rabbit holes I was telling you about earlier. On July 8th, 2015, Stephen Smith was found dead in the middle of Sandy Run Road in Hampton County. To date, there have been no arrests made in connection with his case. On February 2nd, 2018, Gloria Satterfield falls at the Murdoch home on Moselle Road, the hunting lodge. She has served as the family housekeeper and a nanny of sorts for nearly two decades. Three weeks later, Gloria dies as a result of her injuries sustained on the property. Alec tells Gloria's sons that he is responsible and plans to sue himself, so they are financially taken care of. Her family never receives any of that money. A year later, almost to the day, a boat allegedly operated by Paul crashes into the bridge on Archer's Creek in Beaufort County. Mallory Beach was ejected in the crash and goes missing. The remaining passengers are described as grossly intoxicated. On March 3rd, 2019, after a week of searching, a boater discovers Mallory's body in a marsh area near the Broad River boat landing in Beaufort County. Later that same month, the Beach family files a wrongful death lawsuit against a Beaufort County bar, convenience store, and two homeowners, all of who the suit claims served Beach and her underage friends alcohol the night of the crash. The lawsuit was later amended to only name Alec Buster and Parker's Convenience Store. On April 18th, 2019, Paul Murdoch is indicted on charges of boating under the influence, causing death, and two counts of boating under the influence, causing great bodily harm. On May 6th of 2019, Paul pleads not guilty to all charges. On June 4th of 2021, that slide has the wrong date, sorry, court ordered mediation in the wrongful death lawsuit has failed. The case appears to be bound for trial. And then just three days later on June 7th, 2021, Alec Murdoch discovers the bodies of his son, Paul, and his wife, Maggie, at their hunting lodge property on Moselle Road in Islington, South Carolina. He calls 911 at 10.07 p.m. The Colton County Sheriff's Office responds and secures the scene. South Carolina's State Law Enforcement Division is contacted at 10.28 p.m. to assist, otherwise known as SLED. SLED agents arrive at 11.47 p.m. On June 8, 2021, authorities confirm the identities of Paul and Maggie Murdoch and refer to the incident as a double homicide. However, they say there is no threat to the public. On June 10th, 2021, Alec's father, Randolph Murdoch III, dies at age 81. He had been battling cancer. The next day on June 11th, 2021, a gravesite service is held at Hampton Cemetery for Paul and Maggie Murdoch. 
On June 14th, 2021, the Colton County Coroner confirms Paul and Maggie died from multiple gunshot wounds. They estimate the time of death somewhere between 9 and 9.30 p.m. On June 17th, Alex Brothers, Randy, and John Marvin appear in an exclusive interview with ABC News in which they plead with the public to come forward with any information. They say they don't know whether the family has enemies, but Paul had received threats. On June 23rd, SLED announces that based on information they found during the course of their investigation into Paul and Maggie's homicide, they are opening an investigation into the death of Stephen Smith. On June 25th, members of the Murdoch family announce a $100,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. On July 7th, attorneys representing Connor Cook filed a petition alleging law enforcement tried to shift the blame from Paul Murdoch to Connor Cook during the boat investigation. On July 22nd, SLED releases the 911 call that was placed by Alec Murdoch the night that Paul and Maggie were murdered. On August 6th, the Attorney General's office drops all charges against Paul Murdoch in the death of Mallory Beach due to his own death. On August 11th, 14th Circuit Solicitor Duffy Stone recuses himself from the investigation into the deaths of Paul and Maggie Murdoch. On September 2nd, the firm begins an investigation into Alec after finding a suspicious check on his desk. They allege Alec has been taking money from the firm and clients for personal use. On September 3rd, Alec is confronted about the accusations by the firm. He is asked to resign and does so that afternoon. On September 4th, Alec is shot in the head while changing a tire in Hampton County. SLED investigates the incident and says Alec was hospitalized in Savannah and was said to be conscious and speaking. On September 6th, Alec releases a statement that he is resigning and entering rehab. Later that day, the firm releases a statement that Alec was stealing money from them. Two days later on the 8th, the South Carolina Supreme Court suspends Alec's law license. On the 10th, a spokesperson for Alec releases a statement that his shooting was not self-inflicted. He sustained a skull fracture and the gunman was driving a blue truck. On September 13th, SLED announces it is opening an investigation into the claims that Alec was misappropriating funds from his former law firm. On September 14th, Curtis Smith is arrested and charged with assisted suicide insurance fraud, and several other counts in the September 4th shooting of Alec. Later that day, Alec's attorneys release a statement that Alec has battled an opioid addiction for 20 years and that Smith was one of his dealers. On September 15th, Alec is named the chief defendant in a wrongful death lawsuit by the sons of Gloria Satterfield. SLED also announces that day that it will be opening a criminal investigation into the death of Gloria Satterfield. On September 16th, Alec is arrested on charges of insurance fraud, conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, and filing a false police report. He is granted a $20,000 bond. After posting bond, he returns to a Florida rehab center. On September 18th, Curtis Smith does an interview with the New York Post. He says that he is being set up by Alec Murdoch. On September 20th, Connor Cook files a lawsuit in Hampton County against Alec, Buster, Gregory Parker Incorporated and Parker's employee for their alleged roles in the boat crash. On September 30th, a Murdoch family representative releases a statement in regards to the rumors of problems in Alec and Maggie's marriage. The statement claims there are no issues in Alec and Maggie's marriage and that they have seen text messages to prove that. The attorneys representing the estate of Gloria Satterfield announced that a settlement has been reached in the case. On October 6th, PMPED files a suit against Alec for damages after claims he took money from them and clients for personal use. In the claim, Alec is accused of plotting with friends, a fellow attorney, and a banker to pocket money from Satterfield's $4.5 three million dollar wrongful death settlement. Jim Griffin, one of Alec's attorneys, responds to the lawsuit saying this is a very sad development. Alec holds every member of the firm in very high esteem. He has pledged his full cooperation to the firm. On October 18th, the South Carolina Supreme Court suspends the law license of Buford attorney Corey Fleming, who was accused of helping Alec funnel Satterfield's money. On October 14th, Alec is arrested upon release from the Florida rehab and charged with two counts of obtaining property by false pretenses in connection with Satterfield's wrongful death settlement.
On October 19th, Alec appears in Richland County, South Carolina courtroom for a bond hearing. After an hour long hearing, the judge rules Alec will be held in custody pending a psychiatric evaluation. On October 22nd, SLED releases three 911 calls placed the day Alec reported being shot in the head in Hampton County. Two calls come from Alec and one from a passerby who saw Alec but didn't stop. On November 2nd, a judge freezes Alec's assets as part of the ongoing wrongful death cases. On November 4th, Alec and Curtis Smith are indicted on multiple charges by a Hampton County grand jury in connection to the assisted suicide plot. On November 10th, Alec is denied bond following the psychiatric evaluation. On November 11th, the estate of Gloria Satterfield reaches a settlement with Palmetto State Bank. On November 16th, the Satterfield Estate announces a second and final settlement with Corey Fleming, his former law firm and their professional insurance carrier. On November 19th, Alec is indicted on nearly 30 counts stemming from Gloria Satterfield's wrongful death settlement. On November 30th, SLED releases the 911 call placed the day of Satterfield's deadly fall. On December 2nd, Anthony Cook files suit against Gregor Parkery Incorporated, Parker's Corporation, Parker's Kitchen, Parker's employee, and Alec in connection to the alcohol sold at the gas station and for Alec allowing his son to operate his boat despite being intoxicated. On December 3rd, the family of Mallory Beach files suit against several individuals claiming they were harassed by those who created fake social media accounts to affect ongoing civil proceedings. On December 6th, Gloria Satterfield Estate files a suit against the Bank of America claiming the bank aided Alec Murdoch's financial crimes against the former Murdoch housekeeper. On December 9th, Gloria Satterfield Estate files a suit against Curtis Smith, claiming Alec paid Smith $2 million over the span of six years, money that should have gone to the Satterfield family. Also on the 9th, the South Carolina State Grand Jury issued seven indictments consisting of 21 new charges against Alec. The indictments charge Alec with nine counts of breach of trust with fraudulent intent, seven counts of computer crimes, and four counts of money laundering, and one count of forgery and alleged schemes to defraud victims of nearly $1.5 million. On December 13th, Alec is given a $7 million bond for charges stemming from those indictments from the grand jury. On January 4th, 2022, PMPED changes their name to Parker Law Group. On January 11th, Corey Fleming has his law license suspended by the Georgia Supreme Court following accusations he helped Alec funnel money from Satterfield's wrongful death settlement. On January 20th, new indictments charge Alec with 19 counts of breach of trust with fraudulent intent and four counts of computer crimes. The total from the new charges of alleged schemes to defraud are nearly $2.3 million. When combined with the previous state grand jury indictments from November and December, the alleged total is almost $8.5 million. On January 24th, an attorney representing Mallory Beach's mother and two survivors of the boat crash file creditor's claims, totaling $65 million, against the estates of Paul and Maggie, this prevents Alec from inheriting the Moselle property before claims are paid. Sometime in the beginning of February 2022, the Moselle property is listed for sale at $3.9 million. On February 14th, Morgan Doty, a survivor of the boat crash, filed a lawsuit in Hampton County against Parkers, Alec, Buster, and the estates of Paul and Maggie Murdoch. On March 16th, Corey Fleming is indicted on 18 charges involving the theft of more than 3 million in insurance money from Gloria Satterfield's family. On May 4th, the South Carolina State Grand Jury indicts Alec, former bank CEO, Russell Lafitte, and Corey Fleming on a total of 30 criminal charges, including breach of trust, conspiracy, and computer crime. On May 31st, Alec signs a confession of judgment, awarding the Satterfield family more than $4.3 million. On June 3rd, the Satterfield family confirms that SLED plans to exhume Gloria's body as part of their investigation into her death. June 7th, 2022 marks one year since Paul and Maggie's murder. At this time, there are no arrests 
On June 16th, the South Carolina Supreme Court announces it wants to revoke the law license of Alec Murdoch. That same day, the Satterfield family announces the creation of their foundation called Gloria's Gift. On June 28th, Alec and Curtis Smith are indicted on several new charges, from criminal conspiracy to money laundering. On July 12th, SLED informs members of the Murdoch family that they plan to charge Alec in the deaths of Paul and Maggie. The South Carolina Supreme Court officially disbars Alec that same day. On July 14th, Alec Murdoch is indicted on two counts of murder and two counts of possession of a weapon during a violent crime. On July 17th, Stephen Smith finally gets a headstone. It is made possible by donations from around the world. On July 20th, Alec appears in the Colton County Court and pleads not guilty to the murder of Paul and Maggie. That same day, Russell Lafitte is federally indicted on several fraud-related charges. On July 27th, Lafitte is granted a $50,000 bond on his federal charges. On August 17th, Alec's attorney, Dick Harputlian, holds a press conference and files a motion demanding to see all evidence against his client in the double homicide investigation. On August 19th, the South Carolina State Grand Jury issued indictments against Alec, Spencer Roberts, and Jerry Rivers for alleged fraud-related crimes that took place in Hampton and Colton counties. On September 12th, the trial of former bank CEO Russell Lafitte is set for November 7th at the federal courthouse in Charleston. Lafitte faces three counts of misapplication of bank funds and one count each of bank fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracy. On September 27th, the civil lawsuit surrounding the wrongful death of Mallory Beach is scheduled to go to trial on January 9th, 2023 in Hampton County. On October 13th, Alec's double murder trial for the deaths of Paul and Maggie is set to begin on January 30th, 2023. On October 17th, the trial is rescheduled for January 23rd, 2023 to better fit with judicial schedules. On November 9th, former Palmetto State Bank CEO Russell Lafitte goes on trial for conspiracy to commit wire fraud, bank fraud, and misapplication of bank funds. On November 22nd, Lafitte is found guilty on all charges. On December 9th, at pretrial motion hearings, prosecutors argue the double murder happened to distract from Alec's financial crimes. The defense says this argument doesn't make sense. On December 16th, Alec is indicted for tax evasion, stemming from the income he received from illegal activity. On December 20th, South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson announces the state is seeking life without parole for Alec in the double murder trial. On January 23rd, jury selection begins in the double murder trial of Alec Murdoch. On January 24th, 2023, the jury pool of 600 people is narrowed to 120. At pretrial motions, Judge Newman rules to allow ballistics expert testimony at trial. On January 25th, the 12 jurors and six alternates are chosen. The prosecution and the defense present their dramatic opening statements. And on January 26th, witness testimony begins. I've been watching every minute of the trial. It's very captivating. I'm also working on a who's who video. It should be out very shortly. It's not long at all. It's just a very brief synopsis of Alec, his family, and the people connected to him that are mentioned during this trial. So let me know below in the comments if you've been following this case, if you're brand new to it, if you're interested in following the trial, would you like to hear videos, you know, on what's happened already in the trial, or would you like to dig in deeper to the situations that have already happened? Because there's just so much happening with this case. There are so many moving parts and people connected to Alec and the trial itself has been, like I said, extremely riveting. It's both lawyers on both sides have been very theatrical sometimes a bit too much but we're only a week into the trial and it's set to last for three weeks although it might go a little longer so let me know in the comments what you're interested in and what you guys think and i'll see you on the next one